Hey, you guys are here yet? So, uh, what are we waiting for? Maestro, let's start the music. Da -da 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 -da. and welcome to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we're working on this E36 3 Series and the customer complaint is it's only running on five out of six cylinders. So let's diagnose this together. This car was brought to me by another shop. They already determined it had no ignition on one of the cylinders. They changed out the plug and they changed out the coil but still no ignition. They checked all the wiring and finally they sent out the PCM to the specialized company to get it checked. When they got it back, they told them there was nothing wrong with it. They didn't know what to do anymore, so they called my shop and asked me, Dan, are you willing to take a look at it? And of course, we will. A little bit of a mystery? Let's find out. Now before we start, let's get these covers off. Now there are lots of ways to determine which cylinder is misfiring, but today we are using a thermal imager. Now we could clearly see that the exhaust manifold of cylinder number 6 was colder than the other 5. Now since the other shop already determined we had no ignition on one cylinder, let's get focused on that number 6 coil. Now let's use our scope, let's go to brands, BMW and today we're working on an E36 with a petrol engine, engine management, and let's start the search. And this is actually a DME 3.1. Let's go to wiring diagrams and let's zoom in. Now this is a number six ignition coil. This side of the coil is called the primary side and the other side of the coil is called the secondary side and this is where your spark comes from. Now the primary side of the coil 
gets its power on pin number three through this green wire which actually feeds all the ignition coils. Now on pin number one the coil is connected through this black and violet wire through pin 51 to the driver inside the PCM. Now the next thing I'd like to do is scope pin number one of the ignition coil. What we should see there while the engine is running is a power coming from the green wire through pin number three through the ignition coil into the black and violet wire. Now what the driver inside the PCM should do is temporarily pull the power to ground charging the ignition coil and when released induce a spark in the secondary side of the ignition coil. Now let's start off by back probing a known good cylinder number five and let's see what the signal looks like. Let's start with a known good ignition coil number five. Let's set the scope up. Let's press record and start up the car. A known good waveform of ignition coil number 5. Power goes through the ignition coil, the driver inside the PCM pulls it to ground, charges the ignition coil and when released it induces a high voltage on the secondary side of the ignition coil leading to a spark. Now this was ignition coil number 5. Let's take a look at ignition coil number 6. Now let's relocate our back probe from ignition coil number 5 to the control wire, the black and violet wire on ignition coil number 6. Now let's start the measurement. Ignition coil number 6 control wire. Let's start the car. Now when we started the car, we did see the voltage of ignition coil number 6 come up, indicating the power to the ignition coil is fine. What was missing was the PCM controlling the ignition coil by pulling it to ground. Now we didn't see the PCM controlling the ignition coil at the coil itself. Now there still could be a wiring problem between the ignition coil and the PCM. To rule out a wiring problem, the next thing we need to do is take the same measurement, but this time at the PCM itself. Now for easier access, I remove the PCM from its housing and to back probe it, I need to remove this cover.
Now back probing the black and violet ignition coil number six control wire. Now let's start the car up and see what we've got. The ignition coil control wire back probed at the PCM. Let's start up the car. Still absolutely nothing. Let's back probe another coil. That's fine. Back to the control wire of number six. And absolutely nothing, guys. This PCM definitely has got a bad ignition coil driver on cylinder number 6. It either needs to be replaced or repaired. Now if you like this video and if you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. And when you hit the bell, you will get a notification each time I post a new video. Diagnose then, diagnose it again. See you next time guys. Stop, stop, stop. We don't want to end the video like this. We want to fix the car. And we want to learn more about ignition drivers, don't we? Keep watching. Now, if we want to create a spark out of this ignition coil, we need to pull it or switch it to ground. Now, when we switch this ignition coil to ground, there's gonna be a decent amount of current flow. And that current flow creates heat. Now that's a little bit too hard to handle for the little CPU inside our PCM. So there needs to be a switch in between the CPU and the ignition coil that can carry a lot of current. This switch is called a MOSFET. And a MOSFET is basically a transistor that can carry a lot of current. Now in order to create a spark, we need to switch our ignition coil to ground. Now when we switch our ignition coil to ground, there's going to be a decent amount of current flow. Now the little CPU inside our PCM is not designed to handle a lot of current. So there is a switch or a MOSFET in between our ignition coil and our CPU. Now to switch our ignition coil to ground, we use an electronic switch or a MOSFET. A MOSFET is basically a type of transistor that can carry a lot of current. A MOSFET has got three pins, a gate, a drain, and a source. The source is basically where we are switching from, in this case, ground. The drain is where we are switching to, in this case, our ignition coil. And the gate is the control side of the MOSFET. Now when the CPU puts a little voltage on the gate, the MOSFET will switch or create a path between the source and the drain. In this case, switching the ignition coil to ground. Now using a MOSFET, we protect the CPU because the current flows through the MOSFET and not through the CPU. Now the CPU knows when to turn on the MOSFET and switch the ignition coil to ground by looking at the input sensors. The main one being the crankshaft position sensor. Now the time we are switching the ignition coil to ground, like we can see in this waveform, or basically turning on the MOSFET, is called the turn on time or dwell time. This is basically the time needed to charge 
the ignition coil. Now to clarify things, I've made a very simple test setup to make you guys see how a MOSFET is supposed to work. Now first of all, let's take a look inside of our PCM. Because this is a six cylinder engine, we need six MOSFETs to drive six ignition coils. One, two, three, four, five, six. And because the current is flowing through the MOSFETs, they are getting pretty warm. That's why they are mounted on this heatsink. Now this is the actual PCM of our BMW. And over here used to be the ignition driver or MOSFET driving ignition coil number 6. Now I did some measurements and it was totally shortened out. Probably because of a shortened ignition coil. Now that wasn't the only damage, but also the pin inside the CPU driving the gate of this MOSFET was totally cooked. So basically, this PCM is beyond repair. So what I did is desolder the MOSFET of ignition coil number 3, which was working, and that's the one we're going to use in a little test. Now this is the actual MOSFET of ignition coil driver number 3 out of our BMW's PCM. The source I've got hooked up to battery negative. The drain I've got connected to this light bulb representing our ignition coil. The ignition coil or light bulb is hooked up on the other side to battery positive. Right now the positive voltage travels all the way through the light bulb up until the MOSFET, where it cannot continue because the switch is open right now. When we apply a very small voltage on the gate, the switch should close and the light bulb should light up. Now what I want to demonstrate is that the gate is that sensitive that when I wet my finger and put it across the drain and the gate, it should be enough to light up the light bulb. Now when a MOSFET is fine, there should be no continuity between the gate and the drain. Just like this one, which we used in our test. Now this is the one I removed from ignition coil driver number 6 out of our BMW's PCM. Let's check between the drain and the gate. And there's a short, allowing current to flow into our CPU and destroying our PCM. Now the old PCM of this BMW is basically beyond repair. A new one is close to a thousand euros. And this being an older car, that's not really an option. So we got a used one. Now be aware when you plug in a used PCM, it's not going to work because it has got an immobilizer code. Now to make it work, you've got to do certain things, which I'm not going to show you in this video. Now we've got the used PCM plugged in and we took care of the immobilizer problem. Now I like to take a closer look to one of the MOSFETs. I want to bring out the scope and see if we can catch the signal coming from the CPU turning the MOSFET on and off.
Now the next thing we need to do is to confirm the fix. Learning more about ignition coil drivers? Cool, right? Now, if you like this video, and if you want to learn more, please subscribe to my channel. And when you hit the bell, you will get a notification each time I post a new video. And this time we can say it for real, diagnose then, fix it again. See you next time, guys.